Hi everybody, I'm Joe Parker of the Pixel Depot and welcome to the second installment in a series about adding a new industry, Cambridge Iron and Metal, to the Monument City Terminal Division layout. Before we start, this channel is about model railroading including planning, hints, tips, how-tos, and updates. So to stay up to date, click on the subscribe button. Also, click on the bell so you'll get notified when there's new content available. And as always, if you click on the thumbs up to like this video now, you won't have to worry about it later. In the first episode of this series, we added a new spur for the industry, and that video also provided some background about the prototype industry, so if you haven't watched it, you'll want to check that out. In this episode, we're going to start working on the main building at the scrapyard location. This is a large building meant to fill a specific space and solve a specific viewing problem, so it required some interesting solutions. Also, my promise for this channel is that I'll tell you about the problems I encounter and the mistakes I make along the way. And boy oh boy, while making this video, I made a ton, both modeling and otherwise, which we'll get into in a while. You can see here that this is a pretty tight radius. I believe it's a 24 inch radius, if I remember correctly from the plan. As auto racks head towards the Penmary yard, they have to traverse this particular corner and they just don't look very good going around that corner. This was a bit of a compromise so that I could fit the trackage in. The, the area that I'm in here is only eight feet wide and it has to do a complete 180 while still including the track-in area for the consolidated coal uh, loop, uh, which is a return loop that I have there. So in order to make this fit, this corner had to be pretty tight. My plan is to put a building here that will hide the sharp corner. It'll have only two exterior walls facing the layout itself and a post on the other side of the track to provide support. This way the cars cut the corner, so to speak, and the viewer doesn't see just how sharp the curve is. You can also see the cans here. This particular scrapyard had some silos that they used for storage, so these cans represent those. I'll likely end up building the actual models from PVC pipe, but for now these provide a pretty good way to hold up that ruler. So I put these in place here, I, I measured it out, and the, uh, the wall that is essentially on your x-axis is 13 inches from the corner to the track. The one that goes up the y-axis towards the back there is uh, about 16 inches. I was doing some experimentation here to, to see how things were going to fit, make sure that that car fit around the corner. And now I'm going to start thinking about how to cut the walls. So what I'm using for the walls are these brick sheets from Walther's. I've had these for quite a number of years, but Walther's does still sell them. I've used them for various projects in that time, and they actually seemed a perfect fit for this particular structure. You can see they come in a package of four, but I think I can get away with only using three for this project just because of the way that the measurements worked out. They have these edges that are recessed from the brick surface that allow you to line things up so that you can minimize your seams. And I'll also use the lip on the bottom as a guide for my foundation. So I am just going to uh, use my trusty Micromark uh, sprue cutters. I really like these for fine work and, uh, and take these nubs off. I will follow that up with a, a bit of work on the very fine sandpaper to, to make sure that those are, are done. Got the, uh, the sandpaper here. Uh, all I'm going to do is run this across here, uh, make sure that I've got a nice smooth surface. That seems pretty good. Uh, and then we'll go from there. So what I've done here is take the windows and doors that I plan to put into the structure, flip the walls over, and measured where those are going to be. So if I move these, you can see that there is markings there for the windows and the doors. That's where I will be cutting with my nibbler tool and making holes for those windows and doors. This is the nibbler tool that I'm referring to. I'm going to show you how that works on this scrap piece here. It actually didn't used to be a scrap piece. You can see I've got markings here of uh, various locations that were supposed to be doors and windows. This window here I cut too wide. Um, if I lay this window over here you'll be able to notice that it's uh, you know, maybe be able to notice, but it's too wide. There would be a huge gap there, relatively huge. I decided to give up on that one and, and cut this this new wall 
um, that I showed here. That's the window marking. This is the rough opening that I still need to file down in order to make the window press fit in there. I will glue them in, of course, but a press fit is nice so that you know that it's not going to go anywhere. So in terms of nibbling, you can see that the notch here has a, a little cutting edge on it that the plastic goes in there. You press the, the handle down and, and it basically cuts it out. And the way that it works is you put this in here and I'll try to do this slowly so that it doesn't jump too much and I'll also try to center and frame. Press and cut and repeat. You get close-ish to that edge. You want to get too close because then you can end up with damage. From there you would take your emery board, you would just sand and then test fit. Of course this is way too full in order to test fit there but you would press fit it in there, try again, sand, and so on. And that's how the nibbler tool works. What you end up with is a bunch of these little chunks that just end up going in the trash, but it makes relatively short work of cutting openings like this. You do need to be careful, especially when you're drilling your holes. So this was drilled with a 3 8 inch drill bit to get started so that you know you have a place you can put the nibbler tool through. Uh, it needs to be big enough to get the, the, the head notch in, into the there. You just cut away as, as you need to. However, you need to be careful because if you get too close to the edge with that hole, you may get damaged like this. Uh, this damage did not come from the nibbler tool. This actually came from drilling that hole in this area right here. It was too close to the edge. And when the drill went through the plastic, it snapped uh, that piece off. Luckily, and this goes back to what I was talking about in my Is Model Rare Writing For Me video, where I was talking about people making mistakes and being able to cover them. So lucky for me, on the real building, there is a white frame that goes across the top and down the sides. Um, and this is not the correct size of styrene, but it would go something like that. Uh, that I'll be able to cover that hole up with and no one will be any of the wiser. So after spending some time using my nibbler tool to cut out the openings for the various doors and windows, this is what I have left. This is a window opening that I've spent some time cutting out and filing down so that the window fits well. This is a rough opening that I'm not finished with. This is the last one that I have to go. I will be using an emery board, a simple emery board that you get at uh, the pharmacy, CVS, Walgreens, wherever. They're cheap. Uh, this is a coarse, the orange side is the coarser side. The lighter side is, is a finer grit. Uh, and I find that these give me quite a bit of control to file things down without having to spend a lot of money on them. So essentially what I will do here is file things down, do a bunch of test fitting to make sure that the window is going to fit appropriately. You can see there it'll fit in pretty well. This particular window has a uh, close enough fit that it'll stay in there without any glue. I will of course glue it in when I'm finished, but this allows me to see uh, what kind of spacing that I have. You can see here that there's a, a little bit of a gap there. You can see the white showing through on the side over here. I can build a frame out to hide that from the back. And once this is painted, you won't be able to tell that uh, there's a hole there at all, especially given the angle, the viewing angle for this particular piece will be something like this. Uh, you won't be able to tell if there's a hole there or not. All right, uh, trying something new here. So as you can tell from this side, because these doors, these are going to be freight doors that I'm cutting in here, and there's a lot of material to remove. 
So I didn't want to have to nibble all of that away. So I decided to uh, score and cut some of that out as I've already done here. This was kind of the test to see if it was going to work. I've never, never done that before. Um, so now with this side, I'm going to uh, go ahead and show you how I did that. You can see the outline of the, the door that I've put in there so that I know when I'm actually doing the nibbling how far I can go, although there will be a lot of filing and test fitting that goes on in there so that I don't go too far like I did up above. Despite all my warnings to the contrary earlier in this video, I did go too far. So I'm going to score material away and I'm going to use the dull side of the blade, not the, the actual blade side. This is a tip that I picked up at a convention a long time ago. The thinking behind that is, is that with the blade, you're actually creating a V-groove that's pushing the material off to the side, whereas with this, you're, you're actually scraping the material off. It does seem to do a better job with less damage than using the blade side. So here we go. Uh, I'm not going to go all the way to the edge. I'm going to leave some material. You can see I did that around here as well. Um, so if I'm careful, I don't need to actually use the... rule, the straight edge, I can just go ahead and do this here and chop that away. I may use the straight edge when I'm, oops, if I can stay in the channel, I may use the straight edge when I connect the two, uh, because this way I'm going with the mortar lines. Um, I'll be going against the mortar lines there and there's more chance to, to slip off and not uh, stay in the straight line. Trying this new camera angle. I've never actually done anything here at the workbench before like this. And I'm hoping this will work. It certainly means you can see my mistakes more easily. look at the back, I'm not quite through yet in both lines, so we'll keep on going. Let's see, I'm, I'm making some progress, the score lines are going through to the back. Put a few more in here and see how we go. Try to take care of this corner. Cut through the material. There we go. And now we can just snap this through because it's been scored in both places. And Although that took a few minutes, maybe five minutes, that was certainly quicker than trying to use the nibble tool, um, which does take quite a bit of time. And this gets me closer to the edges here. I'll lay this down so you can see it. Closer to the, the marked edges so that I can nibble it out. Uh, we'll go and do that and do some test fitting and filing, and we'll come back when everything's ready to go. This is where disaster struck. I filmed a short time-lapse video and then totally forgot to set the camera app back to normal speed. So I have two days worth of video clips meant to describe this whole process in depth that all go at 100 miles an hour and with no audio. So I'm going to stop here and figure out how to salvage the second half of this video. So yeah, that's all for this episode. In the next installment we'll finish the main building. I mean, full disclosure, it's finished, but I have to figure out how to show you everything that went into it. If you have thoughts, suggestions, questions, please include them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and think others would enjoy it as well, click the thumbs up to like it and tell your friends because this helps me with my analytics and helps me to get more views. Also, if you like the new overhead camera angle, please let me know in the comments. It was something I tried and I think it worked out pretty well, but I want to know what you think. I'm Joe Parker of the Pixel Depot. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you'll meet me next time in the train room.